welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be making this animation in 48 hours. My deadline shifted with about a week, so I thought I had more time, but apparently not. So I have to absolutely lock in. So first I started off with a lot of kit bashing and I used Blender Kit for that. That's what I used in um, this project a lot, just dragging and dropping things in. And then what I also did was I had a collection of photogrammetry uh, models that I made in the past couple of weeks. And you can get that on my Gumroad now. It's a photogrammetry collection. I'll leave a link in the description. 25 really cool models, uh, fully masked. So I just combined them, just dropping in Blender Kit assets and then just dropping in my own photogrammetry collection and trying to build up a scene really quickly like that. And Blender did crash a couple of times uh, because of this. So yeah, make sure that you save it. I didn't, so I had to redo this about two times, but it worked out in the end. So the main goal uh, with this was really just the lighting and the general um, feel of the scene uh, with lighting. And then also showcasing, of course, how easy photogrammetry can be for setting up a scene and then of course kit bashing as well. But I also had to make an animation, um, which I kind of cheated a little bit and you'll see that later in the video. But yeah, this is where I started adding in the lighting. And at first I was going for like an HDRI. I thought that might be good to use like some preset lighting. But after a little while, I realized that it, it just didn't give the control I needed. So I switched it out completely for a sky texture node in Blender. So that's the only source of light in this entire scene, just the sun texture or the sky texture. Then I added in some volumetric lighting, but in the end, it took a long time to render. One of these frames took like 30 minutes to render. So instead what I did is I kind of cheated that. And I'll show you how I did that later in the video. Adding materials is also really easy with Blender Kit. You can just drag and drop it on on an object, then just UV unwrap it, and it looks amazing. I found that if you have really good lighting, anything can look realistic, even like stylized assets as well. From a distance, yeah, you won't even notice. So keep that in mind for future projects. If you really nail the lighting and spend a lot more time on the lighting, I think you can make um, much better things without really doing much for it. One of the problems I had is that we are looking at a window and behind that window, there should be stuff, but I didn't have stuff and I didn't really have the render capabilities of adding more stuff there. So what I did is I made sure that my lighting outside was just really bright. So you couldn't see outside. And then in post, I kind of just tweaked it a little bit, made it uh, much more brighter. So just white, you cannot see through the window. For one of the close-up shots, I did um, make a road and then put in a building, but that's because we weren't looking at the sky anymore. We were looking at the ground. So there had to be something there, but it just turned that off in the render completely when rendering all of the other uh, shots. Saved me a lot of render time and also a lot of time building up the scene because I didn't have to do that. It also makes sense because for a camera, uh, inside it would be exposed for inside light all of the light outside would just be completely blown up something else uh, i recently started doing is playing with the color management in cycles if you scroll all the way down at the render properties you will come to a color management tab something i started doing is playing with the exposure and the gamma i found that just turning down the exposure a little bit also makes for some more realistic scenes because the exposure isn't always going to be perfect and sometimes you want it to be a little bit darker lighting wise for the sky texture i really wanted all of those light rays coming in and then also that you can see where they're actually going so it doesn't look weird so what i wanted to do is kind of get the light to go through the window at an angle that it hit the wall behind it so that we can see the pattern of the window on the wall and then uh, later in davinci resolve I could match that with some extra light ray effects and kind of match them up and make them look really cool. When I was done with the scene, I started setting up my cameras. Yeah, just kind of finding the shots that I really wanted and then trying to make up a story with those shots. At this time, I did a test render and just brought it into DaVinci Resolve to try and color grade it already. Just trying to see if it already worked like this. To kind of speed up render, and I just deleted all of the things that weren't in shot for a specific camera angle. So for example, the close-up shot of the duck, I just deleted everything that you couldn't see and that really made it a lot more responsive in Blender. All right, and that's pretty much how I made the scene. And now we're just going to go over to the animation phase. I animated the main character, which will be this duck with a lattice. And then the rest I just did with scaling 
I didn't even have a rig for any of these. So for the animation, I just animated it, of course, with the lattice. And what I did was I made collections and I had one collection for all of the kit bashing stuff. I had one collection with all of my photogrammetry models and I had one collection with just the duck that I was animating. And that way I could just render out a still image of the background without the duck and that would take me about like 30 minutes because this was a really heavy scene uh, i could probably optimize it but i didn't because i didn't have the time for that and i think it was quicker for me to render it at 30 minutes than it was for me to optimize this to be rendered so anyway i just rendered it out without the duck and then what i did i just made all of the collections that weren't my duck a holdout uh, in the collection properties and what that basically does is it doesn't render it at all and it will just make it transparent so that will save you a lot of time uh, while rendering and i know it sounds a little bit counterintuitive because you still have the objects in your scene but they don't actually take up like path tracing uh, data so the computer really doesn't have to think about it all that much um, when actually rendering it also really helped of course that i could turn off point metrics for uh, the animation pass and then just render out all of the 240 animation frames that I had. And that made it so that every frame was about 10, 20 or 30 seconds, depending on what was happening and how many characters. And then I could just render out the entire animation of like 240 frames and just put it over top of my static camera uh, render and then just do a little bit of compositing magic. And it looks really cool. So if you're ever going to do an animation and you really want like this really cool and realistic cycles render, I recommend using static cameras. Don't use any camera shake. I did have camera shake for this, but I added it in in post and it was pretty much the same thing. And then something that was really nice is that because I photo scanned all of these objects, I actually have them here and I'll go grab one. For example, this guy. And what's really nice is that this one was animated. So I could just do some sound effects with this, but it's really nice to have the actual objects uh, that you can make sounds with so you don't have to rely on other people's sound and you might also be able to set up a sound library with these things and that's basically what i did for all of these animation uh, shots all right so let's go over to the editing phase of this video i'll show you how i made everything uh, all of my compositing layers all of my color grading tell you why i did it and how i did it so here we are in davinci resolve so as you can see i have a lot of layers a lot of compositing layers, a lot of adjustments layers as well. So I have like these EXR, uh, these were the static frame, the frame sequences, and also some screen recordings uh, from OBS for the sounds I used. All right, so let's dive in a little bit. And I think I'm just going to showcase a shot that has a lot of uh, compositing. So I think I'll do this one. So first off, this is a, a 4K 16 by 9 aspect ratio um, file, but I rendered it out in 4K ultra white. So that's why we get the black bars, which I really like. So let's just uh, disable all of these and then I'll show you what's under there. So the first thing, of course, is my basic shot. It's my static shot without any of the figurines that are going to be moving. So that includes all of the other characters because those are going to be falling down in this shot. Then what I added in was a static shot of these ducks because they have already fallen down in the previous shot. And then this layer is the gloves on the desk, which I forgot to render out. Continuity things uh, that I forgot about because I deleted those. And then this adjustment clip, which is really cool. So normally I would just do the color grading in the EXR itself. So in this clip. Uh, but because I'm compositing these uh, three on top of each other, I want them to have the same color grading. So I add in a adjustment clip, which is basically just an empty clip. And then if we go over to the color page, uh, we can select the adjustment clip and then just do all of my color grading in here. And I've already showcased how I do my color grading in a previous video. I can just mute everything. We'll go over it one by one again. So the first thing I do is the ACES transform. Uh, which will be at the end of my color grading thing. So I'm just going to unmute this so we can actually look at what I did. But this just transforms it from a linear sRGB, which will be the EXR file, um, to Rec. 709, which is a standard. Then for the white balance, there is a really tiny adjustment here. You probably won't even be able to see it. Then it's just done with this color picker and it just color picked the window, but it's going to be really white there because it's so bright. And then one of my favorites is adding inhalation. So if you zoom in here and mute it again, this will just be like your normal render. 
and if we unmute it you will see some red lines um, along the sides of this uh, just adds a little bit more of a glow um, I guess then we have the light rays and I just match them up to the angle of uh, the light rays already coming in and I should have set this to at an angle but because we're working with a sun it's going to be so far away that uh, it's basically going to be parallel so just set that to at an angle and then just match it up like that that's really nice one problem I actually had with this is that there was like a black box showing up for some reason and that happens if I change the uh, shadow right here yeah there it is i have no idea what this is if i hit pause it disappears only in play but if i render this out this also showed up so um yeah i had to separate the shadow from this creative grade then we add in the grain is 16 millimeter 500 titanium uh, i could have also done 35 millimeters when i was presenting this it was on a really big screen so you notice the grain a little bit more yeah, on my screen here, I really don't notice that much. And yeah, that's basically the color grading. Then what I did is add in some falling dust and make it just really subtle. So color dodge at 50 opacity. Then another adjustment clip, which is the camera shake. to kind of make it feel alive a little bit more. And then last but not least, adding in the cinema bars, because with a camera shake, your frame is going to be moving around a little bit and we just want to cut it off. So adding in some cinema bars really helps with that. So that's an important step and then you're done. And I basically did that for everything. Sometimes I had to do a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, but that's really dependent on if there was animation or not. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe uh, and I'll see you in the next video.